Well, hello team, we're coming at you today for a little lesson on how to use Bunsen burners. All right, just a quick one for you. Normally I would do this in a safety video, but um, we can get a little more detail here. So again, if we need a source of flame, which we do like pretty much every single lab, um, we need a Bunsen burner or we have another kind of burner here called a Fisher burner. I'll do the difference between those in a second. But the workhorse for us will be the Bunsen burner. And again, just a source of flame. So, and just like any kind of flame, we need fuel and air. Plenty of air. Fuel we get from right here, right? So that, I don't know if you can see that. That says gas. See where it says gas right there on blue? Boop. So that's your source of fuel. And we just use, you know, natural gas, methane. Yeah, but that's a colorless, odorless gas. So they put another one of some kind of sulfide. I forget exactly what it is. Some kind of sulfide gas in there. So you can kind of be like, you know, I smell a gas leak. And you're like, oh, make sure these are closed, right? So we control the gas based on this. So if I open this up, I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear the gas coming out? Right? And so when this is parallel with the hose, you see that's parallel with the hose. That's maximum gas. And then I can get less and less gas, less and less gas, until it's perpendicular and that gas is off. Obviously, when you're done with the dit lab, turn it off. If there's a fire, turn it off. If you're heading out to go potty, make sure this is off, right? Never have your Bunsen burner running if you're not here to watch it. If there's any kind of emergency, boop! pop that fuel off, this turns the flame off. We'll light it in a little bit. I'll probably have to turn off the light so you can see it. But let's look at the components here. So you know where the fuel's coming from. So fuel's coming through the hose here. Make sure when you check it that there's no uh, cracks or holes because then the gas can come out of the side of the hose here. That's bad. Because I've seen people like heat something, set it down here, and then it touches the side of this and melts right through it. That's a big no-no. <laughs> Don't melt the hose. So it's always a good idea for safety just to check and make sure the hose doesn't have any openings or if it's old and cracked or something. So that's our fuel source which comes into here. And then if you normally you wouldn't unscrew this, but if you unscrew this, so the fuel the fuel's coming out of there and then coming up through here and coming up into the barrel. All right, so we have a couple parts here. So what I'm grabbing is called the barrel. This is the base. So if you're ever moving a Bunsen burner, typically we don't want to move a Bunsen burner. But we do have one particular lab where we have to do this and pick it up. You want to always pick it up from the base because the flame is going to be coming out of here because air is going to come in through here. See these little entr entrance ports? That controls how much air. So this would be like maximum air. This would be minimum air. Right? And that creates different kinds of flames. But if the flame's shooting up through here, because once the fuel comes up and hit, mixes with the air, then you get the, we got to spark it. Of course, it's not going to happen on its own. But if we spark it, this gets really hot. So if you grab this to move, you'd be like, ah, melted skin coming off, right? If, if this flame is on, like I said, don't grab the, the barrel. That's not, do you, should we move it by the hose? That would not be really smart to move it by the hose. Okay, so always if you have to move or pick up a bunch of murder while on, do it from the base. You're not going to burn yourself or burn your neighbor or start a fire or something crazy like that. So when you're um, starting it, if you do too much air, right, which means lots of air, not as much fuel, you'll start it and it'll go and go out and go out and go out. That means you got too much air. So you want to do that. Now, if you don't have enough air, it won't light at all. You're you're doing nothing. So I like to start it, not full, not uh, zero, but about half and half. That usually gives me a good starting flame when I'm starting it. And then I can adjust it, and I'll show you the different types. If we have maximum air versus minimum air, what are the different types of flames that creates? Because we, we may have to adjust that on the fly in the lab by turning this air input here. So let's start it with a half. Let's set this baby down. And how are we going to spark this? Well, don't ever use an open flame. If they have the gas on and the gas is coming out, that'd be just crazy to use a lighter or a match or something. <laughs> that would not be smart. So use a sparker, right? And this is community supplies. We don't keep these in our drawers. They're usually up on top here. And all this is, is just like, you, ever, you know, you ever watch the Flintstones? Fred Flintstone, rub flint on stone, you get spark, light fire, right? Same thing here. So these have a really, if you could feel this, this is a really rough metal here. And when we move this, it scrapes 
flint, there's flint on here, it scrapes it across there and creates high kinetic energy particles of that flint that you can actually see. Uh, you ever drive on the freeway behind a truck that has a chain that's loose and it's hitting the road and when the, when the metal hits the road, little pieces come off that's high energy and they're like bright, like little bright lights. Bright light, Carolyn! Now, if I'm trying to, to get a spark and you're not getting anything, you want to check, so you can, I can pull this out. Boop! And this right here is the flint. Now see how there's nothing there? It's like an eraser on a pencil that's been erased down to the nub, and then you're just killing your paper, right? So that's just gone. Um, this actually comes off, so I can unscrew this, and I can get a fresh cartridge, but that flint has been rubbed to the nub. Always check that, because if I keep going, then the metal part rubs against this metal part and ruins my uh, stuff. So I'm just gonna throw this away. And then you just find your instructor, and we have these cartridges of fresh flint. So you can pull one of these out. So this is what fresh flint, flint, fresh flint, fresh flint looks like, and this is what we pulled out of there. I don't even know if I can hold it. See how that flint's gone? So you need to get rid of that and get the fresh flint one. So I'm going to toss that in the trash, and I'm going to put this fresh flint. Say that ten times. So fresh flint, fresh flint, fresh flint. I found a new tongue twister. So that's on nice intent. Now I got some good flint. So I can now put this back in there. And when I do it, see the sparks? Woohoo, baby! Now a lot of people like to do it with one hand. I find two hands is easier, so I brace it with this hand. What I do is I hook my fingers. This is the part that slides. So I'm pulling, so I'm giving it torque so it pulls against. And then my thumb, I push. So I'm pushing on this side, pulling on this side, and it twists it. See how I'm twisting it? And so I'm giving it a, ugh, a lot of torque. So, so that's a, a useful technique. One hand sometimes doesn't work real well, but you get two, boom. I can get lots of wee, lots of sparks, right? So when I light it, I'm going to turn on the flame, right? I turn on the fuel, not the flame. I'm going to turn the fuel on. I like it on max. Got my air on half. I get it right over the top and just go boom like that. Now I don't have the fuel on, so what I'm going to do is uh, turn the lights down a little bit. So I'm going to pause this. Let's turn the lights down and take a look. Ooh, it's scary, scary dark in this lab. I'm all by myself. All right, so what we've got, I'm going to turn the, the fuel on, right? I got my air on half, so I'm going to get this right over and go boom. Now, see how high that is? You don't want to be putting your face over that. Look how high that is. If you ever, that happened to me one time, I had my face over it and I lit it, boom, and it burned my mustache off. Go put your face over the Bunsen burner when you're lighting it. <laughs> so that height of that flame is really, we got a wild and crazy flame right now. So what you can do is you can just reduce the fuel and that reduces the height of your flame. See that? So I can control the height of my flame by the fuel amount. So I can have lots of really high flame, low flame. Now the type of flame I can control by moving the air input, right? So what I can do, if I do maximum air, can you hear it crackling? So now I'm going to get rid of the air. Now let it crackle. Do you hear it? Now another thing is, do you see that blue inner cone forming right there? So let me let me go away. Now watch as I give it more air. Watch, the, watch this and you'll see an inner blue cone form. You see that? So, ooh, that's hot. The tip of that inner blue cone is the hottest part of the flame. Right, so if you if it says to get a really really high flame or hot flame, you want to maximize the air. You'll hear the crackling, and you get that tip of that blue cone. You're going to fry the doo doo out of it. Super high temperature. All right, this tends to be a cleaner flame, a crisper flame, and a hotter flame when you have maximum air. Now, if I do if I reduce the amount of air, watch you lose the blue cone, you lose the crackling. So now I hardly have, I have way more fuel than air. So what happens now, we have unburnt fragments of the carbon-based fuel, um, which creates kind of a sooty thing. If you put like a white ceramic over this, it would turn black as you caught it, right? So this is a dirtier flame. It's, a, it's not as high temperature. I mean, it's still hot, but it's not as hot as if you had maximum air. So this is a, a lighter, a, a less, a lower temperature flame. It's a dirtier flame. Let's lower it down. And so this is what you would call a very gentle flame. And so if it says to heat something gently, you want um, a little, just a tiny bit of air um, and a low uh, fuel. And so you got this gentle heating, right? That's gently heating. And if I want to fry the doodle out of it, I'm going to increase the fuel, increase the air. 
crackle, 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 and there you go. Now you got your hot flame. Those are the different kinds of flames, guys. Pretty straightforward. I think we're good with Bunsen burners. And of course, when you're done with the day, just turn your fuel off. Boop! And you are good to go with Bunsen burners.